Hello everyone, and welcome back to Vampire. Last time we left off, we were uh, invading the privacy of old Harry here's house. And I, uh, I made a connection while I wasn't playing. He said that uh, my father wouldn't like anybody here. His dad is Colossus Joe, the scruffy guy who looks kind of like Jason Stam. And uh, we told him, oh, your dad wanted me to check up on you. He absolutely never said that. So, I mean, yeah, we're bound to lie. We're a vampire, after all. It's locked. Hmm. Hopefully don't go downstairs and his dad be there and be like, Hey, what are you doing in my house? Hey, right, cool. No, we didn't do his dialogue. May I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like... Well, you know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, what can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. That's all I have to say. So many nice things to say about his father. Forgive my bluntness, young man. But you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place my father's decision and look around you does this look like a nice place to live I mean Whitechapel at this time I think this is around the time nah I don't want to quote anything it seems very Jack the Ripper-esque hmm. you have a roof over your head a place to call home Many people here are not as lucky, you know. That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. But I wasn't even consulted when we moved here. Hmm, wonder where they moved from. Maybe we'll find out. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I, I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody, frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. Yeah, I kind of don't blame you on that one, Harry. Your father and Mr. Lewis used to be good friends. What happened, Harry? I was young then. I don't remember Mr. Lewis ever coming back again after my mother died. Or was it after my father started bullying him? I don't know. Have you tried speaking to Mr. Lewis about it? I don't go out often, but yes. And he scolded me and told me to leave him alone. I guess my father frightens him too much. But you are not responsible for your father's actions. Am I not? Dad always says that he joined that gang for my safety. So if I wasn't born, people wouldn't be worrying about Colossus Joe. I still find it funny they call him Colossus Joe when he's so tiny. Eh, let's see what he has to say about it. We know what's going on, but let's see what word around what Have chapters. you any recent news of Nurse Crane and her dispensary? Nobody dares to enter the dispensary now. Rumors say the nurse has gone mad. Oh no. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. We did that. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. Oh no. Hmm. Well, I suppose we should head to our objective, which is right up here. Past Father Fuckface. Oh. Guess it's not right there. 
the other part of the church. Yes? What is it that you want? I'm sorry to disturb you at such a late hour. No worries, my son. I'm still quite awake, having just returned from a funeral. Yes, I know. I've forgotten what I wanted. I don't know... May I help you, child? You seem somewhat perturbed. I haven't the strength to cross the threshold. I wish to pray. To cleanse my soul. The church is shut by order of the bishop. But I'm still the vicar of St. Mary's, if that is any use to you, my son. Hmm. You seem to me a good soul, vicar. But this is a personal matter. There are no secrets from God, my son. If your heart needs comfort, consider me your chapel. For I can be as silent as stone. Oh boy, if I got something that's gonna shatter you, bud. <laughs> this is a private matter. This is a private concern. <laughs> I have words for one departed. They're not for living ears to hear. Your eyes burn with rage. Yet I see the pain that lies beyond. I am here to lighten the burden of all God's creatures. Whatever you tell me is between us and the Lord. Very well, priest, as you seem quite adamant. Open your heart, my son. Tell me what burdens you. With whom do you wish to speak? Hmm. I bet if we say this, he's like... Ah, oh, you can open up more. He's definitely going to say that if we pick this. He can be like, you can tell me anything. Let's just be open. She was my sister. You seem so troubled by the loss of this girl. What happened to her? Uh, it was an accident, but it was also a murder. It was an accident. A terrible, terrible accident. I see. And how are you feeling, my son? I feel responsible. The pain is consuming me. I have a final question for you, my son. This is of the utmost importance. Ask your question, Vicar. What would you like her to know? I'm so sorry, Mary. I promise to find who is responsible for all this. I'll put an end to this horror. You have been heard, my son, and your burden will lighten if your words are sincere. Go in peace now and live your life in the way she would have wanted. <laughs> live your life in the way she would have wanted. I'm sure all these people I keep killing is not the way she would want. Whatever happened on this dock is between my sister and I. It does not concern God at all. Hmm. I don't think we can get there from here. And maybe we might be able to just cross straight to the hospital. Look like a lootable for a sec. It's one of them. Oh, priesty guy, we gotta take him out. Out. 
wait your turn, bitch. Now you guys are dead. It could have went entirely different. You guys want to be pricks. Oh, excuse me. Before we finish the fight, the priest. Why you guys insist on fighting me? It just ends in death for you. Every time. Anybody home? Or is this a... Oh, this is the one building we keep going into inadvertently. We've been in there like four times now. I just keep going in like, hey, what's this store go to? Horns, bro. Fear be God. I would harm no child of my making. This is your doing. You made me. Made me this creature. What are you? I am the land. You are our champion. Uh. I want to ask, like, all of these. You selected me. Chose me. As shall my children yet to come. What is it you seek? This age is sickly. An ancient poison, an older rage, brewed in a cauldron newly forged. This has something to do with the epidemic. Seek truth, my champion. Defeat the serpent of knowing with iron spur. All right, I've so I have more questions. Decisions for me, pretending to know how I should feel or behave. So the huh. vampire we'll who made room. me is some sort of disembodied entity. Or was he just projecting this vision in my mind? <sighs> Maybe Edgar can help me with this one. Uh, I want to see something before we... Anybody at the hospital? Those are investigations. There we go. Headache, and we can't cure that yet. All right. Hello, hello. Oh man, oh, what happened here? The old lady who knows everything that happens around here.
before we go talk to Edgar. I wonder if she'll tell us what's going on. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. What can you tell me about the recent events in the hospital? That Mr. Hampton killed Miss Jones in her room, then ran away. And did you see all this? No. I was working by the tents when it all happened. I only entered the room when they asked me to clean up the blood. Where is Miss Jones's body? I don't know. I'd imagine the morgue. It all happened so quickly. Did you see Sean Hampton leave the hospital? I think I saw a silhouette exiting the hospital gates after the shouting started. At first I thought it was someone who was just scared, but well, maybe it was him. Hmm. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Jonathan, my sincere condolences for your loss. Your kindness is much appreciated, my lady. Is there anything you require? Well, Goodbye, my lady. I was hoping she'd give me more information on, uh, you know, all the blood at her feet right there. Hmm. Ah, well, well, we'll circle back to that later. Maybe Edgar will have us investigate it. Yeah. You know? are a coward blinded by fear. God protect us. You've got a leech in the hospital. Uh, yes, my hospital. My mission is to heal while you go about warring. You've set the table for a snake. I wonder why there's venom in your food. I'm growing tired of your song. You're a woodsman, McCallum, not a doctor. Return to your hunt. Remember, I've a good nose for machinations. I can flare the scent at a mile. You can't hide from the god. Oh no. Leave him, Jonathan. This is sacred ground. Neutral territory. And I just had the carpet cleaned. Hmm. <laughs> By the sacred stole, this is very bad news. Bad news indeed. What happened? The hospital has been attacked. We have injured patients, at least one dead and several missing. This has spiraled out of control. Even the most infirm are asking to be allowed to return home. cannot have the people lose faith in this institution. This hospital is their only hope. Of course, you're right. But we cannot afford a public scandal. It would ruin us. We must restore order and quickly. You mentioned the dead patient. Who is he? She, Jonathan. She was Miss Harriet Jones. I found her room like a slaughterhouse. Blood everywhere. The duty nurse is taking care of the mess. I knew he'd bring it up. Very well. I'll help you. I know this place means something to you. I have noticed how you suppress your appetite when around the staff and patients. You need to know you can trust me, Edgar. I do, dear fellow, I do. Please then, tell me. Sean Hampton, the man we thought we'd saved at the docks. It seems he was infected after all. So Hampton became more beast than man. Exactly. And now guard of Prewen suspects the hospital of vampire activity. Do you realize what that could mean for us? Well, I mean, they're not wrong. Hmm. 
Well, they are not far wrong. The hospital is almost crawling with vampires. McCullum is a fanatic. The guard will stop at nothing. You, you don't know what they're capable of, Jonathan. Very well. Since I brought Mr. Hampton here, I will put an end to this. Here we go, cleaning up masses again. John Hampton lives and breathes for the well-being of his flock. There's no other place he would go but the docks. Doing a really bad job cleaning that blood up. I mean, I don't mean to be that guy, but uh, there was still blood all over the place. Oh, the docks. That way. <laughs> it seems the Prewin are redoubling their patrols in the district. I must be more careful. Or I could just fight them all. That's always fun. It's on to us. Ow, hey, catch it out. I need some stamina back. I don't think they really doubled their patrols. They just added priests to their patrols. Oh, well, maybe. I don't know. There's three guys here instead of two? Oh, no, there's a fourth guy. Hmm, which way do we need to go? To the left. I've been killing your friends. I'm here to kill you now. Oh, hey, throwing stuff? We don't throw stuff. That's not cool. Ooh, what's down there? I'll go in there in a sec. Shotgun guy. Oh, it's just a path to the dog. Or the little seaside. Should be able to take that chair and smack somebody with it. <laughs> I'll get to you in a sec, Chunky guy. Wait your turn. Let's take your crossbow friend out of this. Nuisance of range, but man, are you easy to kill when I get close to you. Not even really that bad of a nuisance, I guess. been to the docks in a while since the beginning of the game. Oh. Not who I'm after, but... 
as a name, we'll kill him. You taste delicious. Oh, hey, bad shadow. That was fun. Hmm. Ingredients. Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Just in a little building we can enter. Someone's playing a right strange game. Now I'm gonna oh, find a person to talk to. Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't you see I'm busy here? Dr. Jonathan Reed, that's who I am. And who are you? Ah, some fancy gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name, then? The name is Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. Ha! Uh. Are you some kind of vigilante patrolling these streets at night? Something like that, but the police aren't in charge here. We are, see? Uh, I bet he's one of them gang guys that's name I can't think of that Doc uh, Clay is in charge of. So you're a concerned criminal, is that it? Using funny jokes about me and my boys, are you? Fuck. You must have some balls. I saw many men like you during the war, Mr. Digby. Greedy little cockroaches who feed on despair. I could kill you for saying that. But, nah. You've been a soldier. I can respect that. So, tell me about your gang, then. What? Have you got a death wish? You really want me to answer that? Well, yes. You seem so proud of your status. Why not tell me who you're working for? Oi! I'm the boss, all right? The wet boot boys work for me. All of them. Situation round here is better than other districts because of us. Because of me. <laughs> Wait till Clay gets back, man. He seems like he won't put up with that. What can you tell me about this part of town? Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. 
And if Weiner says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient, my sweet queen of the docks. Clay's wife. No hints. Do you know where I can find Sean Hampton? I need to talk to him. The sad saint. Why on earth do you want to talk to him? He was one of my patients at the Pembroke Hospital. Oh, yeah. I heard the poor bastard had been abducted by some cat. You, you better ask Tom Watts. He knows Sean Hampton well. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. I mean, that's some kind of a... Good evening, miss. I am Dr. Reed. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you? What do you want? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I ain't paying any bill left by Clay. I'm not here to collect payment, Miss... Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want, then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? Ah, she's a... She's a merchant. What can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things, and I send my wet boot boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. You're quite blunt, aren't you? I like people who know what they want and say what they think. This is a time of great opportunity for those ready to embrace their destiny. Sorry. I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us, then, if you don't want to get hurt or worse. Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets, if you must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time. Hmm. <laughs> What can you tell me about this part of town? You can't trust anyone around here. As soon as you lower your guard, you can be sure some arsehole will take advantage of you. Hmm. I wonder if anybody's pickpocketing me while I'm talking to her. Nobody on that side? Uh, oh, we can't see that far. I'm getting robbed. Really? Don't you think that's a little bit excessive? Bastards. All of them. This region only responds to violence and threats. You sound like you're thinking of somebody in particular. Take the grave diggers of Southwark. They must pay me every week, but it looks like they forgot who gave them permission to steal from the dead. Looting corpses in a mass grave. That's... That is a new low. Whatever. Hey, since you're a doctor and all, maybe you can access that forbidden area and remind those bastards what they owe. Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes. Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs. For once. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. What is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about these things. Behind all your crude words and your attitude, I sense romance and a soft heart, Miss Cox. Romance? I have no time for such rubbish. I use mm. Booth like I use everyone else. Oh, hint failed. Huh. I wonder if we can, Ooh, like, go back in and... Hope? Nope. Locked it out. Should have said about her using him. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. What happened exactly? I don't know, and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard, but he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened, but you executed him anyway? No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory, and this is our law. 
And your conscience is clear. You kill without hesitation. Violence is an efficient tool, Dr. Reed, when used properly. So you decide who lives and who dies, just like that? Yes, Doctor. Just like that. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm saying it's my way of dealing with troublemakers. <laughs> I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? The sad saint? I heard he was mugged or something. Yes, he was. But he left hospital recently. You don't say. Well, I suppose it's good news for the homeless and the useless. Ask them, they must know something. <sighs> Everybody is so very, very helpful. Can I see what you have? I'm just to curious say. what as she sells. As you have money, I'll show you all I have. Mm, parts. We could sell stuff. We're not going to. Mm, rats. Damn, more people to talk to. Mark my words. Not a drop of blood left in his body. This is the work of a vampire. I'm a Come on, I want to talk to you people. A vampire hunter. You best be off to your hunting then. For if the sewer dog is back and hunting all these poor folk, he needs to catch him. A sewer dog? What's it look like? It's an old story. A monster with daggers for teeth and icy claws. He comes of a sudden, at night time, claiming innocence, then vanishes. Teeth? Claws? Murders by night? Your Come on, sewer I want to talk to you. It's my business. He's the kind of prey I hunt, milady. Evening, miss. Well, I never. That's a first. Customers who make that much mess rarely come back. Never mind in fancy togs. I'm much more myself than when we first met. By the way, I'm Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome back to the Turquoise Turtle, then, Doctor. I'm Sabrina Cavendish. How can I help you? What can you tell me about this area? People don't appreciate that line of questioning round here. You'd best be more careful with what you say, sir. You look concerned, Miss Cavendish. This is a bad borough. Most people I know are afraid. Most locals will rob you blind, or worse. You best mind your step. If you're uncertain about your safety here, the docks might not be the right place for you. I've got responsibilities. And it's not like I've got the money to move anywhere else anyway. This place seems, how shall I put it, very colorful. I'm sure it has plenty of stories to tell. We get people of all sorts here. It's that rare place in the docks where you can have a drink without being murdered. At least it's not happened yet. So this bar is neutral territory then? Yeah. Tom's convinced this is something the locals need. No one ever draws a weapon here. That's one of the reasons I accepted the job. Your <laughs> boss must be quite the negotiator to force such an agreement. Yeah. Tom's a great bloke. Mr. Hampton, who runs the night asylum, he's the only other man that's able to keep peace around here. Excuse my curiosity, but where exactly are you from, Miss Cavendish? Something bothering you? What, my name? Or my complexion? Believe me, I never judge someone on their place of birth or the color of their skin. If that's true, you'd be one of the few not to make fun of me. Just you, Tom, Dyson, Miss Fishburne, and of course, Mr. Hampton. I'm sorry if I worried you. I was just curious to find out if you know this part of town well. Knows he? My dad was a sailor from Bombay, and my mum was a maid born up in Glasgow. They got married in London, and here I am. Hmm. Miss Cavendish, would you be willing to help me locate Sean Hampton? You better ask Tom, sir. Why not answer me directly? We respect the privacy of our customers here, sir. Only Tom can decide who to speak to and what he'll say to them. That's fair. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Oh, convenient. You're still here. Good evening, sir. 
Have you witnessed any suspicious activity or strange events recently? And what do you define as a strange event? More to the point, who are you? My name is Ichabod Throgmorton, vampire hunter extraordinaire and warden of the East End. A vampire hunter? Really? I know what you're thinking. I'm just another lunatic howling at the moon, but I'm not. The bloodsuckers exist, and they're close. Mr. Throgmorton, I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'd like to hear more about these vampires you're hunting. A man of science? Well, I'll be glad to enlighten you. What can you tell me about this neighborhood? Did you hear about what happened to Jack Gillingham? Poor oh boy. It's a shame I wasn't around to protect him. It's impossible to protect everyone. The violence seems endemic in this part of town. But it's my duty. I am convinced Jack Gillingham was killed by a vampire. These evil rodents are spreading like a plague. So, how exactly are you protecting these people? I'm curious. I patrol late at night, investigating anything unusual. I try and encourage people to stay indoors, but people are careless. Can I help in any way? Actually, yes. I plan to put up posters to alert the population to the vampire threat. Are you asking me to paste posters about vampires around the docks? If you wouldn't mind. If you did that, then I can focus on my patrols. Hmm. Sure. How do you identify a vampire? It's simple, really. They can't stand daylight. They're afraid of garlic and holy symbols. And they also cannot enter a house without being invited. Have you ever killed one of these creatures? Yourself, I mean. Of, of course I have. What kind of question is that? It's a dirty business, believe me. Hmm. Have you heard of the Guard of Prewan? Of course. They're dedicated hunters. A little militant for my taste, but they do let anyone join. <laughs> Were you ever tempted to join the Guard yourself? I did think about it, but I'm more of a silent hunter. They're more of a sanitary militia. So you hunt alone? That sounds risky. Vampires are just like every other predator. They hunt when they're hungry and follow certain patterns. It's just a matter of observation and patience. Hmm. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me, Mr. Throgmorton? The sad saint? He should be at his night asylum at this hour, but I cannot tell you how to find it, sorry. Really? Why is that? It's nothing personal, Doctor. I'm sure your intentions are good, but people who sleep there, they have plenty of reasons to hide. I could make you tell me, but I respect your refusal. You really believe Sean is a saint, don't you? All I will say is this. Gossip has it that when he was a child, he was molested by a priest of all people. Funny thing is, though, it only strengthened his faith. Hmm. Maybe at least you can tell me who could help me find him. Tell you what, go and chat with Tom Watts. He's a bartender and good judge of character. If he talks to you, then it's fine by me. Goodbye. And good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. Oh, well, Tom! Drinks just as likely to cause a problem as to solve one. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Oh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. What can you tell me about this part of town? It's not that bad. Thanks to people like the sad saint of the East End. Who? Sean Hampton, our own private holy figure. 
Few are foolish enough to make peace with the gangs. Sean is one of them. How is it you can keep this place open? This part of town doesn't seem particularly safe. Well, since everybody needs a drink, my pub is considered neutral ground by most groups. Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. Uh, with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps, with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. Hmm. I see. So you get pressure from all sides about how this place should be run, do you? Oh, something like that. Nothing that a few wise words and a bottle of gin can't solve. You're something of a figurehead around here. I'm only pouring alcohol for everyone to forget their troubles. Sean Hampton is the one giving them long-term hope. Why does your waitress feel in danger working on the docks? This part of town is dangerous for all, but for women it's worse, as always. Sabrina is a brave girl, but she can't help feeling in danger. Do you think she has good reason to feel this way? Are you not worried about her safety? Of course I am. The truth is, she's tougher than me deep inside. She just has to learn to control it. Hmm. I wonder if he'll tell me. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? I believe he returned to his flock. Can you confirm that? Oh, I bet you're right. Sean can't help but worry about the poor and sick. Oh, I guess it has something to do with what happened to him as a baby. Please, tell me. Well, I don't like to gossip, but I heard that the sad saint was abandoned as a baby in front of a Catholic orphanage in Dublin. Well, it would explain his faith and need to help everyone. The important thing is I find him, quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse, northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. Thanks, bud. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Hey, there's another set of steps here. All kinds of loot. I'm surprised he told me before I fetched his gin. I've been like, uh, oh, do something so I know I can trust you. He was just like, eh, go that way. That's blood. We'll go there in a minute. We'll go there now. Hmm. Seems like the guard of Prewen is on Sean Hampton's trail, too. Flamethrower. 
Man, that sucks. Ah, this guy's gonna suck the fight. Can we go back out? Oh, nope, there it is. Wait. Oh no, that was just a window. We gotta take out this little pass first. Oop. Ah, can't hit me right now. Oh, he just brings in more guys. What a dick. That's bad. Too bad. Cut that shit out. up on my blood again.
Corps are deep, the result of rabid rage. If this is Sean's doing, he's become a murderous beast. And no loot from any of you? You got some loot. That is it. Well, that's unfortunate. You're on the other side of the wall. Where'd your friend go? Hmm. Just passing through, I guess. Die, Fermi! You're drinking of my blood by drinking a friend. Oh no! You bastard! Revenge fight. This area, all kinds of shit wants to kill.
I love loot. Front, huh? Guards. Have too many open doors. Or too much loot. You can never have too much loot either. We pick it back up though. We were probably supposed to come from that direction. Well, I guess we could have went around there. I think this is where we're supposed to come. It's locked, all right. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. May I have your attention for a minute? Good evening, sir. My name is Giselle Paxton, but I don't have time for men like you. Have we met before? No, but I just need to look at your fancy clothes to know that you must be desperate to visit the docks at night. That's quite judgmental of you. Sir, I've led enough strikes when I had a job to identify you as an enemy of the working class. Huh. By the bitch. May I ask what you do for a living? I'm killing myself scraping for a living. And you? Have you ever had to struggle in your entire life? Should probably tell her about when I was in the war. As I told you, I'm a doctor. You have to work a lot to earn that title. Oh, a doctor. Hmm, born with money in a nice house, were we? Was Daddy a banker or a doctor himself? Why such hatred? Are you judging me by my clothes or my job? Of course I am. Fuck, you're so blind. You don't even see your privilege. Lazy people like you disgust me. What can you tell me about this vicinity? Tell you what. Just spend a few weeks here, and then ask me that question again. If you're still alive, I mean. 
If you have something to say, say it. I'm getting tired of all this. Oh. You want information instead? Well, here's some for you. Giselle Paxton does not like you at all, Doctor. You don't know me, Miss Paxton, and yet you see me as an enemy. Oh, your manners, your clothes, your words tell me everything about you, sir. I know your kind, and you don't belong here. You're right. I have never suffered from poverty. But that doesn't mean I don't fight it and its consequences. I really doubt you ever had to fight for anything in your life, Dr. Reed. You speak of strikes and class enemy. Am I right to assume you're involved in trade union activism? You bet I am. Well, I was. Nowadays, I'm just another worker blacklisted by the big companies. You lost your job because of your beliefs. Those bastards really hate a worker who refuses slave wages and unsafe conditions, especially when it's a woman. Isn't the whole point of trade unions to help workers in need? Why don't they support you? A few nights back, I lost the money my companions had asked me to hide. With me and my sister being penniless, they thought I stole it. What really happened? I drank too much that night. Strange men saw me count the money in that bar. Some sort of militia in uniform. I'm sure they robbed me. I knew that'd be an investigation. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me? Probably what is it you want? Me. Does he owe you money? Has he displeased your royal highness? I'm no snitch, Mr. Fancy Pants. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. What a bitch. Oh, we found him. Hmm. What if he didn't do it? I'm going there in a sec. I just want to explore the rest of camp for that. She says I'm no snitch, like we can't just walk through the door and him be right there. Like, hey, what's going on, Sean? Did you, uh, you kill an old lady today, or? Wait, I saw him. We'll talk to this judge. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Can I help you? A fancy doctor lurking at night by the docks. <laughs> Not fishy at all. And what about you? Working outside at night in this dangerous part of town. You want to know my secret? I'm trying to earn money. And I'm Lottie Paxton, by the way. Is it not dangerous to work here at night? As long as I have good legs, I can run away from trouble. The sad saint now provides me and my sister a bed and a roof. I don't want to lose that. Are you homeless, Miss Paxton? Mr. Hampton's night asylum is our new home now. It's a safe place for me and my sister. What can you tell me about the Sad Saint? It's just the nickname of Sean Hampton, the Sad Saint of the East End. He gave me shelter, and he's not always sad. What can you tell me about this place? How are things here? It may be okay for a strong girl like me, but a dandy doctor from the city like yourself? You better watch your back, Mr. Reed. You really think I should go back to a safer place, miss? No. I think you had better stay and help as many people as you can. Just avoid the wet boot boys. Those bastards are worse than the epidemic. 
Which local dangers must I avoid? Well, the gangs, the thieves, the drunks, the jobless. A man with your fancy clothes will attract a lot of attention. Well, I am not someone so easily intimidated. Glad to hear that. And if you get into trouble, you can always seek help at Shornhampton Shelter. No one would dare to be violent there. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me? Mr. Hampton must be in his office at the night asylum he manages, I suppose. Why do you want to see him? He was a patient of mine at the Pembroke Hospital, but he left abruptly. I see. Well, Mr. Hampton is a discreet and dedicated man. I'm sure you'll find him soon enough. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. All right. We did see him. Where did he go? We saw him when we were out here. Oh, he's over there. I'm gonna visit him. Eventually. Probably not in this video. Because I saw we're already past an hour. So I'll end this video soon. But we're gonna loot first. It's locked. What's down here? More downs? Loot. Loot's down here. Upstairs first. I know where Sean is. He's down there. Sean, thanks for all the loot, bud. Place is awesome. Oh, can we get up there? No. No, we cannot. Boo. Alright, so he's right in there. We're going to end the video here, though, and uh, we will pick up in the next video talking to uh, Sean. So, uh, for anybody viewing, whether it be now or in the future, whether you watch the whole thing or bits and pieces, skipped around, skipped to the end, whatever the case may be, know that I always appreciate your views. I appreciate you, the viewer. So, uh, thank you. I hope I entertain. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.